Okay, um, now you have uh, went and ordered your trees, hopefully from a reputable nursery. This one is from the keeper's nursery. As they arrive, they're wrapped and packed with the straw around them to keep it moist and warm and free from frost and wrapped also in another layer of the plastic. So this must be around seven or eight trees that I've ordered. And uh, by now uh, is winter, January or something around. Today is the January of 9, 9th of January 2016. So practically it's the right time to plant a tree from now up to the March or April, depending on the temperatures, you can plant your trees. You receive it in such a condition, uh, protect it from the frost and everything, and uh, you then go to plant it. The next tree which I'm uh, I planted, the third one, is a queens. Queens uh, Mitchell's prolific. This is from the Yugoslavia, Serbia. Semi dwarfing on the Queens A rootstock, stock, and again from the keeper's nursery. It's a prolific uh, small queens. It gives the small queens and very uh, prolific, easy to come to crop. This is the Queens variety Esfahan. She about in 2014 and planted in February 2014 from the keeper's nursery about this. This was tall, quite tall, up to here. Then in the summer, it grew again. And uh, it gave a few uh, blossoms, but no fruit. And uh, it's quite tall, about two meters, now probably two and a half meters. It grows bigger even, probably. I think it is in the Queen's C or Queen's A rootstock. It's quite tall. And because I have to use the bird netting to protect the orchard from the birds, I have, I have a height limit. I don't want this goes really too high. Also, it means that it will not be available if there is any food or anything. So I have to really prune it now. That's the time. It's now March. It's the plants are semi-dormant now. They're gradually awakening up, so it's the right time for me. But the first thing is that I will uh, prune from here, here, here. So I will have a few good branches this side, this side, hopefully. I will prune some of this also, just uh, going too, uh, too high. And uh, a few branches here. As you see, I've now pruned the top of the uh, Queen's Isfahan. Here, one, two, three, four, four branches are here. A uh, little one here, I keep it. I keep these ones, the little ones. Let them to see what will happen. Probably these are fruit pots. I'm not sure. It looks, uh, Queens is kind of between apple and uh, uh, apple and pears. So we will see how, how the fruit pot looks. Uh, I pruned this one also. I pruned the extension of it here. I have to empty around it. It was all these things because here the council was building the fence in the October, November, and we have to remove everything. So now it is cluttered here. I will remove them hopefully this weekend or the next one. And this one also is pruned. So, and this other branch also is pruned. So, you will see how it will do. They have some good branches. Those lower ones probably eventually will go, but if there is anything in intermediate here around, I will let it grow. Now you will see how it is doing. Beautiful day in allotment. Sun is shining. Okay, this is the... Queens variety Esfahan. I think this is Esfahan.
or Shams. Anyway, I bought it from Keeper's Nursery. That's from Southwest Asia, where they really grow the best queens in the world because they're really aromatic and tasty. And they're not rock solid hard, hard like the European ones. They are edible quite. You can eat them raw, you can make jam, you can use them uh, in anything that you use, apple, cooking apple. They're delightfully sweet and aromatic. And this is the second year it's giving me some flowers, blossoms. But the blossoms this time are more numerous, probably about can say probably about 20. You can see the those ones under there. Yeah, we will see. Even if you one or two of these become a queen, so I will be delighted. We will see how they will do. Okay. This is my Queen's variety Esfahan. And look at it. This is in flower. The flowers are open. They're almost as beautiful as any rose. Different stages of them. There's loads of this. I'm taking photos of them. So beautiful. I hope I will get a few fruits from this this year. The position is not bad actually. Most of the day it takes about probably yeah, 10 to 12 hours of sunshine if it is sunny. So it should be something similar to where this tree actually grows naturally in Southwest Asia in, in Iran. So we will see how it is doing. At the moment, I'm just delighted. Let me smell one of these flowers, just to see. Hmm. Um, the smell of them is not anything close to the uh, smell of an apple. It's almost kind of uh, plasticky or... I don't know how to describe it. Like a, like a dark um, and damp place. Uh, yeah, it's not pleasant. The smell of it is not pleasant. This, the fragrance of the flower is not pleasant, but the beauty is there. It's, it's, it should not be probably all the time pleasant for us. It's for the pollination, attracting the pollinating in insects. So that's the that's the trick they do. Roses are not yet flowering, so that's a beautiful flower that we can enjoy. So the Queen's variety is found from the Keeper's Nursery in Kent. I'm happy that I bought this tree and I pruned it actually. It was very high, a very lanky branch going bending over my bird net because I could not really make it any taller. Now at least we will have some growth here, some good news, something to look at. And looking forward to see if we can have some real fruits out of here. Queens. Esfahan. Okay. This is my Queen's variety Esfahan. And look at it. This is in flower. The flowers are open. They're almost as beautiful as any rose. Different stages of them. Loads of this. I'm taking photos of them. So beautiful. Oh, 
over. I hope I will get a few fruits from this this year. The position is not bad actually. Most of the day it takes about probably yeah, 10 to 12 hours of sunshine if it is sunny. So it should be something similar to where this tree actually grows naturally in Southwest Asia in, in Iran. So we will see how it is doing. At the moment I'm just delighted. Let me smell one of these flowers just to see. Hmm. Um, the smell of them is not anything close to the uh, smell of an apple. It's almost kind of uh, plasticky or... I don't know how to describe it. Like a, like a dark um, and damp place. Uh, yeah, it's not pleasant. The smell of it is not pleasant. This, the fragrance of the flower is not pleasant, but the beauty is there. It's, it's, it should not be probably all the time pleasant for us. It's for the pollination, attracting the pollinating in insects. So that's the that's the trick they do. Roses are not yet flowering, so that's a beautiful flower that we can enjoy. So the Queen's variety is Fahan from the Keeper's Nursery in Kent. I'm happy that I bought this tree and I pruned it actually. It was very high, a very lanky branch going, bending over my bird net because I could not really make it any taller. Now, at least we will have some growth here, some good news, something to look at. And looking forward to see if we can have some real fruits out of here. Queens. This one. I cannot believe what I see. This Iranian medlar, uh, Iranian queens called Esfahan. I bought it from the keeper's nursery, the brilliant nursery that was introduced in the BBC's uh, British Garden Revival, the excellent nursery. Uh, after just a few weeks of having the blossoms, I see some fruit here, fruitlets. That's the uh, queens. The first queen's fruitlets for me in the allotment orchard. And you see more is forming here. That is the best news of the day. I'm taking photographs of them, but this tree practically is full of blossoms. And it's such a small tree, it's the second year I planted it. And yet, God willing, is going to give some crop. <laughs> That's the reward gradually coming in the garden. All the efforts I made over the past 14 or 16 months coming to fusion. The leaves are impressively raw, large. I like that. Pear variety, Mitchell's prolific. I have one pair like uh, Queens, Mitchell's prolific. I have one like this, and uh, I can say that uh, in the first year it didn't give me anything, so I'm looking forward for the next year. You can sample one just 
to say that I've seen it. That's the pear. That's cracked a bit. Back of rain probably for a while. No, irregular watering. Anyway, yeah, this is normal. This is the normal thing that they have. This is kind of velvety stuff. This is a Queen's tree in the Rickmansworth uh, Rose Garden community orchard. And yeah, it is a fruit. This, I think, is one of those uh, Yugoslavian varieties, Serbian. It looks like a pear. The Iranian version of the Queens look more like an apple. It's very aromatic and softer, more palatable than the European versions. Uh, I have a variety of that bought from the Keeper's Nursery called Shams. Shams Queens. And uh, now here in this tree we see that how it is. I'm really delighted that we have this community orchard. What a good idea. Beautiful fruit. It is now today 31st of the August. Uh, it's yet a small, I think two months it can go even to November and December to be harvested then. But it's beautiful, isn't it? Sibosa or Saibosa or Zibosa. Season October, November. The shape of the Queens is like this, but unfortunately they are, they are near the end of their life, they are rotting. I don't see any, any good specimen of it, only one on the tree which has been had a cut. But it looks early, early enough that people have tasted it. This is a Ekmek. Uh, Queens, it's quite a small, it's from Turkey, you can have a large fruit but as you see it has been cut for sampling, uh, I think this is a smaller one, okay, compare this with this, it's quite a uh, yeah, a little bit like uh, Golden Delicious, but with a pear-shaped top. Okay, quince. Uh, quince uh, is a fruit which is uh, kind of similar to apple in a way. Uh, but the fruit is quite larger. Uh, in the UK, when we get them, they are like this yellow, but they are actually if if it was grown on the tree and you harvested it from your own tree they are covered in a kind of velvety uh, upper skin and uh, they come off by rubbing by your hand i suppose that is uh, not considered as something market appealing it looks as a blemish as if it is but that actually shows that it is fresh if you have that cover on it the kind of beige color it is, a velvety beige color covering. So when you rub it off with your hand, uh, you see this yellow beautiful color. Uh, Queens is a very uh, ancient fruit. Uh, in the region that I, uh, well, my ancestors are from, it was called the best. Beh means, beh means the best. That was considered the best. Uh, the fruit of it was uh, used in food. You could eat it because it's a culinary thing. You can eat it also as a dessert, you can eat it. And uh, uh, you could uh, make best beautiful jam out of this, a jam which has a kind of red color like this, uh, the color of this uh, Sony headphone that I have here. Uh, beautiful. Very good jam, very 
Uh, yeah, uh, it will not get mushy like apple or anything. Really good. It keeps this structure very well. The, the smell of it is lovely. The best part of this is the smell of it. If, uh, of course, it depends which kind of uh, which variety you're growing. Most of the European varieties are kind of very hard, like, like granite, and they have really uh, d uh, difficult. You will have difficult time just trying to bite it. But uh, the ones that uh, we receive here from the Near East and Middle East and Southwest Asia, they're really good. I've, I've bought myself one variety of the tree from the keeper's nursery called Shams or Isfahan. I think that's the one I bought was Isfahan. Isfahan is a, is a region in Southwest Asia, is a town in Southwest Asia. And uh, I bought it from keeper's nursery in the UK in Kent. And I'm waiting for that yet to fruit, but this is the one I bought from the shop. There is an ethnic shop uh, somewhere, uh, everywhere, I suppose, in everywhere in the UK you can find the ethnic shop. They sell these things there. And uh, they're very, very good to try them. At least go once and just try. Just If you didn't like it, okay, that's it. That's your option. But uh, trying it at least. And uh, the one, this one uh, was... Uh, was on my fruit bowl for a while. I ate the previous ones. We made a video about it when we were doing, cooking our Christmas uh, lunch. We used it with our chicken. And what made it really the most beautiful chicken I've ever eaten was that chicken in the Christmas lunch. Because we used, of course, many uh, ingredients, including this beautiful quince. And now I'm going to cut it and just uh, show you how it tastes. Okay, now what you see here is the quince that I have cut, and uh, the inside of it you see is a big cavity for the seeds of it. The seeds were cold in the past are good for softening the throat. Uh, you just boil them uh, or you put them in a little bit boiled water and uh, just drink it. And uh, as you see, it looks a little bit. Uh, Something between apple and pear was harder, more firmer than the apple. The smell of it, oh, it's beautiful. It's so aromatic, so beautiful. Depends on how fresh it is, of course. If you got a fresh uh, from the tree, that will be the divine thing that you may, the best smell you may ever expect from in a in a kind of appley fruit. And, uh, of course, this is, as I told you, they will be used in, in, in ancient medicine. They use them for that purpose. And uh, now I go for a little taste of it. Okay. Mm, and, um, kind of hard, dryish, but sweet. And uh, it's pleasant when, when you chew it. And let the... Saliva mixed with the food is actually quite edible, palatable. And um, you can cook it also if you want. If you are not uh, exposed to ex exotic foods in the past or don't like to learn about new fruits, there are many ways to use it. You can stew it using a stew, you can cook it with uh, as a jam, in a jam. It has pectin. You don't need pectin with this. Um, just cut it, dice it into pieces. And I mean, one centimeter, or one and a half centimeter, whatever size you like. You don't chop it usually, but that practically makes it mesh. Mesh. You don't want mesh. You want just to have the consistency and the smell of this preserved. Um, you add sugar and just boil it as usual, like any other jam that you make. Oh, can we call it preserve? It's not jam, in a way. <laughs> yeah, um, because it has a real fruit in it. And, um, yeah, you can stew it, put it in any stew, like anything that you put in a stew. You put potato, you add a little bit of this. If you add plum into your um, stew, you can add this one also. It cooks very nicely. It keeps its consistency. It will not go mushy. And um, you will recognize it when you're eating. I must say enjoying it is a kind of a quiet taste, a quiet habit. I've grown up with this, so I like it. I can enjoy it as it is. 
I suppose you don't eat the whole fruit. Of course, you can eat if it is really good and fresh from your own tree. But if you if you don't want, just eat a uh, half a bit. Keep the rest for the um, cooking. The smell of it is really good. And look, it's now winter, and there is not much fresh fruit from the trees. That reminds you of the spring, the summer. The beauty of it, the smell of it, lovely. Try Queens. For me, that's the best. It's better than the cooking apple. Definitely better than cooking apple. Usually for the Christmas lunch, we use the uh, apples, granny meat and other things. But this year I want to use some quince. We had three quinces this year from our tree in the allotment, so... And... Ah, oh, it smells so beautiful, so aromatic. This perfume. Ah. Oh, it's like a, as if you are smelling a drink. Ah, oh, so rich, like cider. Oh yeah, the smell of it. Beautiful. The best cider you can imagine. Or peri actually, peri cider or pear cider. It's the correct name for it is peri. It's really lovely. We have three, so we just use uh, one or two of this. And here. Okay. That will be our Christmas uh, lunch. Everything here except the uh, tangerine is ours. We have grown it also. We are getting self-sufficient almost. We are there. Our allotment is practically a small holding. Now we have cut the quince and Susan is putting it under the skin of the bird. Chicken. That's beautiful. Never thought about that. Yeah. Really? It's a bit of a lot of me. No, I won't do it. I'm putting this here. A Christmas lunch. Pippin hot. Most of it is from our allotment, our own produce. Thanks God for these blessings. Okay, uh, this is a video about uh, a book. I've seen a lot of books and I have as many of them. But uh, now gardening books and allotment books are not my interest anymore just because they are too general. And I'm more interested in the specific subjects. The books about one fruit or one variety of uh, vegetable and just explaining about it. So this is the book of Queens, Queens Growing and Cooking by Jane McMorland Hunter and Sue Dunster. It's published by the English Kitchen, in the English Kitchen series, series by the, um, let me just tell you which company, which publisher has published it. Prospect Books. Date of publication is 2014. Uh, the book is, uh, in the UK, sold for 9.99. And I found it in the Waterstone in the Charing Cross Road. It's a very interesting book in London. And uh, it's a small, relatively small, but uh, it's, it's only just in 200, 128 pages. It's a small, it's a pocket size, as they call it. So it's good for, even for Christmas, uh, stocking filler <laughs> as a gift to give someone. Um, the book has 128 pages, I told, and uh, 
the chapters, the con table of the contents is as follows. Introduction, uh, the story of the queens, queens in the garden, queens in the kitchen, baked queens, poached queens, preserved savory dishes, Uh, sweet dishes, af afternoon tea, drinks and liquors, uh, confectionery, the book that the books that made Queens popular, the lost world of the Queens, health and beauty appendix, orchards to visit, acknowledgement, bibliography, index of recipes, and uh, uh, the pages are a little bit yellowish uh, color. I think that's the design of it. It's not just because it's a it's older or uh, it's just a design of the book because that's actually somehow resembles the color of the <laughs> color of the queens which the book claims uh, was known to the ancients as a golden apple i know as a fact that this this variety of the fruit is actually from southwest asia and uh, especially from the plateau of iran where it is grown for many centuries it is called beh beh means the best in persian beh is the name of the queens and is called because in, in that language it means the best and uh, that is the best uh, but the author prefers to as usual because it's written by Europeans uh, goes to trace it back just in the history of the Greeks as usual and uh, they call it as golden apples and the golden apple is according to them is the queens we don't have any historical proof for that but this is what the author has came up with the book has a lot of uh, chapters and uh, and the history of it poems and pieces and classical pieces of the information from the old books about queens and from 19th century 18th century and uh, a good number of recipes also how to care of course growing it in containers you can grow it in containers you know. that's interesting of course you have to water it anything above the ground will lose the water due to the gravity so water goes out from the bottom so you have to add it but uh, that's oh the good thing about the queens okay this book is very up to date why i, I checked it actually uh, there are varieties of the queens that actually are new to this country and the book has mentioned them and these are the book these are the varieties from the keeper's nursery, Isfahan, for example, Iranian queens, as I told that this is the original, origin of many of the common foods in that area, Southwest Asia. And uh, again, Shams, Shams means sun. Uh, uh, again, that is uh, from Persia, Iran. And uh, these are the varieties which are new to the Britain, and they have been introduced by the keeper's nursery. And I have I have a few of them in my own allotment, so uh, I can tell that these are this is a new book in that sense. The information is up to date. So after that, you come to the point that you have to to know what to do with the queens. Queens, my rem I remember. Okay, this is what this book says. Well, what I remember by my mom is that we use it for making jam a lot. The seeds of it even are edible. You can just boil them like tea and just putting in the tea or anything. That's very good for softening the throat for anybody who has a problem with the throat. If you're a singer, that may help you. Even. Uh, all kind of medicinal values for the queens and the, it, itself. Uh, the Iranian queens that I know and I have eaten, they are edible as as it is, as raw. But the European queens I've heard, I've not tested it. Like, I mean, I've not grown up to know exactly. The ones that we have here in, uh, in the UK are imported usually. But the the ones that grow here, they say they're, they're hard as granite, they're very hard rock-like. But you can make a good jam out of them. And my mom was, you make the best jams you can have in, from for for any any kind of fruit is a queen's jam, or as you call it, preserve. And, uh, of course, there are other things you can use them, ginger, poached quinces and other things. You can use them even because they are the, the hard varieties. The hard varieties from, which are from the UK, you can use them uh, instead of apple in cooking. They are better than apple because they keep their shape better and they taste really good. Uh, like the normal way that you use potato, you can use quince in conjunction with potato in all kinds of stews and soups and other things. And uh, you can liquidize them if you don't like chunky bits, but uh, most people probably like also chunky bits. 
And uh, it is a book that I can recommend. It has a good balance of everything, recipe, history, classical works, and uh, varieties. As I told, varieties are really up to date. They're very good. Permanent record of the uh, latest varieties that we have in the UK available to to average gardener through the keeper's nurse and many of them. And uh, the book has, as I told, 128 pages. It's quite a small. Uh, you can order it from your from online online bookstores or from the publisher actually if you want. The ISBN is this. And uh, 9781909248410. And I bought it from the Waterstone in Charing Cross Road for 9.99. In the US probably it's about $15. And uh, if you cannot find, uh, I mean, if you want it for Christmas as a stocking filler, I think that uh, uh, you can get it if you are if you are going for it. Uh, if you if you don't have much time, just ask your local bookshop to see to bring it for your local water store or any other bookshop to bring it for you, so you will have it on time. Hopefully, they have that network of connection that they they receive these things probably quite quicker than us. And that's it. This is a good-sized book. Beautiful. Good for Christmas. Stocking filler. Book of Queens. Queenses growing and cooking. We are getting spoiled for choice. We have at least one book about Queenses now. The next thing is that if I see there is any book about plums. That's what I like to see.